Um, but it's amazing how many people get this wrong. And if you're in doubt listening to this podcast, just ask yourself in the last week, if you listen to a presentation where you were thinking, I don't know why I'm in this meeting. I don't know why I'm listening to these words. And, and, and it will be true for a majority of, of listeners, I think. Welcome to the Full Funnel Freedom Podcast. If you are listening to this, you are likely leading a team responsible for generating revenue. Purpose of Full Funnel Freedom is to support people like yourself and keep your funnels consistently, reliably full. Welcome to the Full Funnel Freedom Podcast. I'm your host, Hamish Knox. Today, I have award-winning speaker and author of The Busy Person's Guide to Great Presenting, Lee Warren, as my guest today, to talk about how to more effectively communicate as a sales leader. Lee's headed up sales at several large organizations, including News International, Hertz Leasing, and the Channel Tunnel. He has also had a parallel career as a magician and a mind reader and is a member of the world famous Magic Circle. Since 2010, Lee has combined his background in sales and performance to deliver keynote speeches and is trusted by global brands to help their teams sell better, network better, and communicate more persuasively. In 2022, Lee received the UK's highest award for professional public speaking, the Professional Speaking Award for Excellence. Lee. Welcome to Full Funnel Freedom. Oh, hi, Hamish. Thank you very much. It's a real pleasure to uh, to, to, to jump across the, the oceans and be with you. Uh, it's great to see you again today. And uh, I saw on your on your website, Prince William once described your uh, magic, I believe, as absolutely amazing. <laughs> yes, he, he did. Uh, I dined out on that testimonial for you. There's, there's few things in sales as good as a good testimonial. And that that, uh, that paid my mortgage, that testimonial. <laughs> amen. Amen. So I've given the audience the 30,000 foot view of who Lee is and what you do. Take us down a level. Tell us the 90 second story of you and how you got to where you are today. Sure. So so very briefly, I've been in, in sales or around the world of sales most of my life. Um, and I had, a, a, a with both my careers, magic and sales, I had an almost insanely cliched beginning. So in sales, I began by selling Encyclopedia Britannica. That was my first sales job uh, when I moved to London as a squeaky teenager. Uh, so, so quite literally um, uh, trying to sell enormous encyclopedias to people <laughs> at exactly the same time the world was going digital. So that was a baptism of fire in sales. And then in, in magic, I began my career in that way that you always hear in, in um, uh, sort of films and so on, which is I was a little little boy and had a magic trick for Christmas and I completely fell in love with it. And showed my family that same magic trick over and over again. And they were so bored that for my birthday, they bought me a magic set. So at least I'd have more than one magic trick to, <laughs> <laughs> to, to, to show them. Um, so that's that's sort of 90 seconds of how I got started. And then it all developed from from there, which we can get into if you want. Yes, absolutely. So uh, yeah, I love I love the story. Uh, yeah, the 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 uh, the Christmas story of the boy gets the magic trick. And I love the fact that your family's like, listen, we've seen this one a lot enough. <laughs> Here, here's, a, here's a few more to play with. So Tell me about the transition from you know so magic and uh, to public speaking. Yes, they're both performance oriented, but how did you make that transition from you know being on stage, you know nothing up my sleeves, to being in front of global brands and supporting their sales teams in in selling more effectively? It's a great question, actually. And so, the, so the honest answer, a little bit, is I don't know. Um, <laughs> it's it's like many things that happen to us in life. It's it, it's sort of a series of random chances and, and moments. Uh, but essentially, what happened is when I was performing as a magician, I've always understood business quite well, and I've always mm. understood sales fairly well. So even when I was working as a magician, I was doing a lot of stuff with brands and helping them to engage their clients and prospects. Sometimes mm -hmm. using magic as a means to. Uh, sell more or prospect more. Mm -hmm. And slowly over time, clients said versions of things like, oh, you're, you're obviously good at communicating this. You obviously understand how to speak to a market. Can you teach us to do this? Mm. And um, and my answer was, well, I'll, I'll give it a go. I've never tried that. I'll give it a go and see. And slowly what emerged was there was a lot of content in my head and a lot of ideas that come from a background of both being in sales and of being in performance that are really all about how do you engage people's attention? How do you get people to remember you, to take you mm -hmm. seriously? To believe you um, mm -hmm. and lots of those skills came together and slowly and it took uh, several years but slowly i realized i had actually a product that was you know speaking rather than just doing magic tricks on stage very cool now when we're talking to our audience of sales leaders around the world today you know some of them come out of sales 
some of them don't they're they're they've got operations or finance or whatever backgrounds and a lot of them aren't necessarily extroverted right they they're they're very good at creating success through others and i'm sure there's a portion of the audience today listening to you going yeah that's great for lee that's <laughs> that, i'm never going to do that so when we look at starting at the beginning you're in a sales leadership role you have to be public you have to be talking to the board and the senior executives, maybe to the to the street if you're publicly traded. And you have to be talking to your sales team on a regular basis, both individual and groups. So when we're looking at that group dynamic presentation, which can be very, very nerve wracking, where how do you encourage your clients to get started in being comfortable on stage? It's a really great question, actually. And, and I think this applies not just to being on stage, but it applies right at the other end of you're just in a small meeting and you have to put your hand up and get your point heard. I think it applies mm -hmm. across the whole range of different forms of speaking to others. I think there are a few things to say. One, one is we reserve a very particular kind of respect in the world for people who are able to articulate their points clearly. Mm. And that's very different from people who are able to do it confidently. Confidently could be a bonus, mm -hmm. but actually very often in terms of presenting ideas to others. So, for example, speaking to a board or engaging a sales mm. team, it's very often about clarity and, and articulating value much more than about, if you like, your performing skills. Most of us as audiences, we're not actually that interested in other people's presentation skills. We're really mm. interested, is the message good for me? Is it going to help me? You know, Am I going to use this after you finish speaking? So one of the first things certainly I'll do with people who come to me with help, for, uh, as happens sometimes, for, for their own uh, uh, presence and gravitas and, and, and engagement with audiences is start to take their attention away from themselves and really focus on, on the people they're speaking to. Mm -hmm. And I know that sounds really, really basic, um, but it's amazing how many people get this wrong. And if you're in doubt listening to this podcast, just ask yourself in the last week, if you listen to a presentation where you were thinking, I don't know why I'm in this meeting, I don't know why I'm listening to these words. And, and, and it will be true for a majority of, of listeners, I think. Mm -hmm. um, so really getting out of your own head and really getting into the heads of the audience. What do they need to hear from me? What's going to be useful for them? And that can really help to build people's confidence because you're mm -hmm. engaging with others rather than just being obsessed with your own introversion. Mm -hmm. And I, I've maintained for years, a leader's number one job, actually, a human's number one job is to create clarity. When we're communicating with someone else, if we're not creating clarity, we are failing. And I love this idea of make it about them. Not, not, not about you, because I can remember the first couple of times early in my career when I up on stage, and all I was thinking about was me. Right? Is my tie on straight? Is this? Is that? Will my technology work? Not thinking at all about the people in the audience who are literally the most important people in the room. Yeah, I've got a message to deliver, and if the message sucks and they go to the "Why am I here?" Well, then everything has just been a giant waste of time. So I love the beginnings, right? That foundation of like make it about them. Now, one of the things that I have heard over and over and over again is you got to practice, right? Whether you are talking, doing a coaching session one on one with one of your top sellers, or whether you are going into your first or 50th board meeting, you got to practice. What are some of your best practices that you share with your clients around practicing for presentations? I, I absolutely agree. And but one important word I'd make is there's a distinction between practicing and rehearsing. And the okay. distinction is really important. So practice is sort of, uh, it, you, you know, you've got a few slides, you know, roughly what you're going to say. You might just work through it a bit, say a few things out loud, and you've got mm -hmm. a sense, yeah, okay, that's about 20 minutes. All of that kind of stuff is practice. And you're still okay. saying, oh, actually, that slide needs to be there, and maybe I'll leave this point till the end. That's all practice, and that's okay. essential. But rehearsal is the killer skill. Mm. And nobody does this, and everybody should do it. And I would include role play under rehearsal as well, by the way. Mm. And people who do it instantly leap into the top 5% of communicators in the world. I'm completely convinced of this. And rehearsal means, let's say, for example, you've got a really important presentation to give. You've got to engage a sales team, or you've got to get the board to, to buy into your idea. Mm. And you've got 15 minutes. So with rehearsal, what you do is you put your timer on for 15 minutes, and you mm. just go. And you make all your mistakes, and ideally you record yourself, mm -hmm. um, and you feel uncomfortable, and you feel awkward. But that's the point of rehearsal, because when you're communicating, you've only got two options. You either rehearse in advance, or you rehearse in front of the audience. Right? <laughs> so, 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 so make your mistakes in advance. Get all those feelings out of the way. And if you do that rehearsal three times, you'll be so much better and so much more confident. So one of those two rehearsals is, is a bad thing, right? Rehearsing in front of the audience, just want to make sure we're bad. Don't do that. 
rehearse in advance? Yeah, yeah. So you, when you first rehearse, you're going to make a mistake, right? You're, you're totally. going to click and think, oh, that slide shouldn't be there, but you yeah. keep going, right? When you rehearse, you say something and you think, oh, that's a stupid thing to say. I shouldn't say it in that way, mm. but keep going. Because if you don't do that in the rehearsal, you're going to do it in the room in front of the people that it matters to. Okay, hey, dive deeper into that because this is something that we coach everyone that we work with on leaders and sellers when we're doing role play. Actually, one of the rules of role play that our clients came up with is to keep going. Because Absolutely. role play and presenting is, you know, difficult. Uh, and so tell tell us more about why it's important to keep going when you're rehearsing. The reason it's essential to keep going is that we think very differently when we're under the clock than when we're not under the clock. And we think very differently when we're speaking out loud than when we're writing stuff down. Mm-hmm. And practice and sort of stopping and starting, that takes us back into sort of school mode of mm-hmm. I'm trying to write a perfect essay. So I got that paragraph wrong. So I'll just edit it and so on. When we don't have the option of stopping, we we first of all we discover our weaknesses. Mm. And if there's one, if there's one downside, or if, if you like, you know, salespeople, I wouldn't want to generalize too much about salespeople, but I'm speaking for myself as a salesperson. Sure. One of the things salespeople are very good at is we're very good at telling ourselves afterwards that stuff went better than it actually did. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, we yep. we Photoshop reality, right? About me. <laughs> and I, you, you know, I do this. I think a lot of people in sales do this. When you're doing role play and rehearsal, you're, you're sort of exposed suddenly and you have to confront yourself as you are. And that's mm. one of the best ways of, of learning. Um, and it's really only under that pressure. It's a bit like learning another language, Hamish. Mm-hmm. It's, it's only when you're thrown into another country and you have no access to anything other than this new language. That's when you start learning because you suddenly you have to work in this new language. And so role play is a bit like that. You 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 get the chance to do it. You keep going and you have to keep going. And that pressure helps you to, to grow and learn free offer for listeners of the Full Funnel Freedom podcast. Go to www.fullfunnelfreedom.com slash scale to get your white paper, Eight Fundamentals of Building a Scalable Sales Model. If you're listening to Full Funnel Freedom, you are wanting your funnel to be consistently reliably full and sustainably scalable. So go get your white paper, Eight Fundamentals of Building a Scalable Sales Model at www.fullfunnelfreedom.com slash scale. Now, back to the show. What are some of the other things that you would recommend as a for sales leaders who are, you know, they've rehearsed, they're comfortable, and now they get in the room, whatever that room might be, and you want them to have clarity, you want them to be confident. How do we how do we meld those two things together? Yeah, it's a great another great question. So there are a few things. One is to be really clear in your own mind that what you're not doing is you're not giving people information. Um, and this this sounds provocative, but it's it's once you get this idea, it can really transform how you communicate and also how you understand yourself and your own confidence. So what I mean by this is when we're when we're standing up in a room and speaking in front of other people and engaging them, it's very easy to think that this is about giving people information. Mm. But actually, it's a really bad way to give people information because they'll forget most of what you say. They'll make judgments based on how you look and sound. They'll get distracted. If you want to give people information, send them an email. But what this kind of communicating is brilliant at is affecting people with information. Mm. It's brilliant at getting people to engage and prioritize and believe information. So one of the, the really found, foundational things that people can do is really understand how am I trying to affect people with information? And at a very basic level, that means you have to know what your goal is. Mm. If you're presenting for 20 minutes, you have to be clear with yourself. At the end of that 20 minutes, what do I want the audience to do as a result of my message? And that can bring real clarity. So let me give you a very quick example. I, I was introduced once to two of the big four accountancy firms were clients of mine. And I was introduced by word of mouth to a third of the big four. And it was all a big stress. I was introduced at partner level. And the introduction was the partner himself won't work with you. But if he likes you as a result of a meeting and he refers you internally, it's a shoe in You're into this business. Mm. Um, And I run a tiny business. You're you're looking at the international headquarters of it. So so obviously, it was was a big deal for me. So I turned up up early for the meeting. um, And there was no uh, queue to get badges or anything. I was straight in. I was 20 minutes early. And I heard him say down the phone to the receptionist he's 20 minutes early so it wasn't a great start you know Mm -hmm. i got taken into a coffee room i was waiting for 10 minutes the person after 10 minutes phoned him and said mr warren's been waiting so Mm -hmm. it sounded like i'd been hassling for this meeting and and he Mm -hmm. sent a message back he's a bit delayed so it was a bit of a car crash beginning to a meeting he was stressed he didn't really need to meet me you know 
So I sat there and I thought, okay, crystal clear, what do I want this person to do as a result of my message? Mm. Rather than just going in and giving the sales pitch, giving the speech I'd prepared, mm-hmm. what do I want him to do? And the answer was, I want him to, to know enough about me and feel comfortable enough that he'll refer me internally. And so we, we went into the meeting room. He wasn't looking very happy, to be honest. He sat down. He said, what can I do for you? And I said, well, look, I can give you my full sales pitch. But basically, a good result from me would be, you know enough, you're happy to recommend me internally or give me some names internally, and I can take the recommendation from there. And he said, well, is that it? And I said, yeah, that's it. That would be great for me. And this man just melted in front of me. He literally melted in front of me. And wow. we chatted for five or six minutes. And I didn't get the laptop out or PowerPoint or anything. And we, after five or six minutes, he said, yeah, yeah, we, we could definitely use what you do. I'll, I'll get my EA to send you some names. And then he said, would you like a coffee? Right? Would you like a coffee? Wow. This man who was stressed and busy. Um, I, I didn't. I got out of the room, gave him as much time back as I could. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's one way of coming up with real clarity is really focusing on the goal and understanding mm-hmm. you're affecting people, not just giving them information. Mm-hmm. I love that because that again ties it back to make it about them, not not about us, right? And something that you had said at the very beginning of our our visit today around clarity and confidence are different. I also, you know, confidence can also be equated with volume uh, cool. too often. So when you're working with your clients, especially at that leadership level, and they've got some foibles. Maybe they can't modulate the sound of the volume of their own voice, or maybe they have a pet phrase that they work in at like, almost like a comma. How can we recognize those things ourselves and then correct them because they are they are part of us? So it's natural for us to communicate that way. I think there are two things to say there, Hamish. Really, one is a lot of a lot of that kind of thing doesn't matter as much as people think it does. It only matters oh. if it starts interfering with the. Uh, message. Okay. Um, so for example, as a really obvious example, if somebody walked on stage and their trousers fell down, obviously you've got to deal with that. <laughs> no, right. So, so, but uh, that's a facetious example, but as, as a clear point, you, you know, you can't focus on anything until those trousers have been pulled back up. Mm-hmm. So if someone's got a really strong sort of vocal tick or their voice is unendingly dull, then of course you've got to fix that slightly. Um, and the way of, of often of fixing problems is not necessarily focusing on the problem, but mm. finding out what some of the alternatives are. Mm. And so you go to an expert and say, you know, how would you do this? And hear someone, for instance, modulate their voice better. And then record yourself and watch yourself back because your own internal sense of how you come across to others and how you sound to others is often very, very different to how you really sound and really come across. Um, so, so hearing somebody else do it or watching what someone else does and then recording yourself Um, and making the changes based on what you watch back. It's quite revealing recording yourself. It doesn't come easily or comfortably to many of us, but it's a great teacher. No, I uh, I really do not like watching myself on video. And I, I've got a sport coaching background. So like watching game film has been a core part of my role as a coach ever since I was 16. And I, I really struggle to watch myself because I am very, very self-critical. So Lee, as a, as a way of tying a nice bow in this, we've got the, how do you get going? How do you make sure that you you come across you know confident and clear? How do you fix your foibles? What are some of those other key things that a sales leader should keep in mind when they are going to make a presentation? Again, whether the room is large or small, what are what are some of the other things that we haven't talked about yet that you'd you'd like to impart to the audience today? Um, great question. Again, you, you're, you're, you've clearly done this before, Hamish. You're good at good, good at once or twice. Asking. <laughs> um, so I could talk all week about focusing on the audience, and that, that's mm. the fundamental point. But there are a couple of very easy things to do here. So one is ask, so what bad communicators do is they say in their heads, they say, what do I want to say and what's the best way to say it? What great communicators do is they think, who is the audience and what do they need to hear from me to get the result that I want? Mm. Um, so in other words, begin the whole process of, of putting your presentation or pitch or whatever it is, put it together right from the beginning, starting with focusing on the audience. Mm -hmm. Um, Another question that can be great to ask, because it can give you some really good ideas, is what does the audience expect to hear from me, but what do they need to hear from me? Mm. So again, making that distinction, because one of the most boring things any of us can do is give the audience exactly what they're they're expecting. And and to be honest, I think also really simply is more more research. Uh, The number of Mm. times I've sat down with people and I've watched them do a presentation, and one of my first questions is, who is the audience? And they give me some vague answer. And just two minutes of thinking, questioning, Mm. uh, a bit of research about the audience suddenly makes the message uh, sharper. And as a sort of 
final top tip thing for, 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 for wrapping all that up together. Um, what I always really encourage people to do also is always have a punchline. So a punchline is, I don't recommend learning word for word what you're going to do. I think that, mm. that that creates some barriers. I think it's much better to have a rough structure and follow the flow of the structure. But I think you should know very clearly what you're going to say at the end. So, mm. you know, you might finish off with, so my final thought to you all today is dot, 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 or really mm. where we need to be in a month's time is dot, dot, dot. And having that final punchline really helps you to get over almost any other problems. You know, the, the projector fails, someone asks you a difficult question, copy comes in at the wrong moment. Any of those things, they don't throw you so much if you really clearly know where you're going and what your final punchline thought is. I love it. Thank you for uh, for sharing that those bits of wisdom. I, I completely resonate, especially that idea of loose structure. I I find the 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 most boring presentations where it's like this could have been a PowerPoint or an email to your point earlier is when someone is almost reading off of a script. And I appreciate that some people get nervous and they 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 don't necessarily like to speak in front of an audience. And to your point earlier and on multiple times, it's not about the speaker, it's about the audience. So Lee. You've had an amazing career so far. You've got lots of great things in front of you. You've probably got some scar tissue and some bumps and bruises, especially as a performer. Uh, if you could go back and coach your younger self, you can go back as far as you like and say, hey, younger Lee, fast forward, you're going to have this amazing career. You're going to have these amazing kudos from Prince William. You're going to be working with global brands. You're also going to have a lot of scar tissue and bumps and bruises. What would you coach your younger self to say or do differently to arrive at the same place, but with fewer bumps and bruises? What a great question. Um, my, my instant flippant answer was going to be, I tell my 20-year-old self, buy 100 properties. <laughs> <laughs> I think Fair. that would solve all, all other problems. I could have done that on a credit card, I think, in 1995. Um, but so so the, the professional, the, you know, the career answer is, um, like so many people, I wish I'd known earlier in my career how important my network was. Um, I, 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 if I could go back to being 20 years old, the, the, the one thing more than any other I would focus on is is the the the, the quality of my net, uh, relationships, both personal and professional, um, and also the longevity of them. Uh, because almost, and I really appreciated this, like so many of us, I think, did in March 2020, because my career went off a cliff like so many people's mm. did i mean my job is basically these days walking into rooms and puffing air at people so, so, of, course, so of course that stopped um, and it was my network that, that got me over that 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 hurdle it was being able to connect with people reconnect with people um call in favors etc so that's i think that's the single biggest change i would make that would have got me to this place now and probably quite 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 a lot earlier um and all those feelings of comfort and security mm. and uh, and so on that comes with having a great network. I wish I'd appreciated all that much earlier. Love it. Great advice. Uh, and yeah, it very much resonates with me, especially uh, recently. Uh, so Lee, we'll definitely link to your book in uh, the show notes. What else have you read, watched, listened to that you would like to share with, for the audience to check out as well? I'm a huge fan of, uh, there are some some great business books in the world, but there, I think there are a lot of books that are outside the world of business that can, can help more. Um, so in terms of, of straight uh, business books that I've read, that I think are genuinely great. So my, my top of that list would be David Allen's Getting Things Done. Mm. It's not an explicitly sales book, but it just helps anybody be more effective, get more stuff done with less stress. So mm -hmm. I definitely put that up there. Um, there's a great book by the first person who headed up sales at HubSpot called The Sales Acceleration Formula. Mm. Um, you'll forgive me, I can't remember his name, but that's the name of the book. And that's, he has a really, really unique take on sales leadership. Um, mm. It's a very, very counterintuitive take. And I think anybody would read that book and come away. You might not agree with him, but you'd come away with a very refreshed view of what it means to create and lead a sales team. I, I think that's that's a great book. And the last book I read that I really found and I love reading, really found fabulous. And it's not a business book. It's a, a psychology book. Um, it's by Jonathan Haidt, and it's called The Righteous Mind. Yes. Um, and the sub the subtitle is Why the Right Keeps Winning. So quite a mm -hmm. provocative subtitle. Um, and it sounds like you've read it as well from your enthusiastic yes. Yes. Um, but if anyone hasn't, it's it, it goes very deeply into many of the biases that we have, as in culturally, uh, sorry, evolutionarily mm -hmm. old biases. It really helped me to explain why so much of understanding other people mm -hmm. is a key tool in sales and business in general and some ways of doing that. Mm -hmm. And I have to say, when I finished that book, I finished lots of books thinking I know more, but I very rarely finish a book and think I'm actually a wiser person now. And mm -hmm. I felt that when I finished reading Righteous Mind. 
Yeah, that is an incredible book. Thank you for sharing that. We'll put links to all those in the show notes. So Lee, you have given us so many great ideas and insights already today. Uh, what would you like to plug? Give us another bit of wisdom, a closing thought. The floor is yours. Thank you. Well, I'm delighted to connect with anybody who likes what we've done today. So you can find me very easily on LinkedIn if you type in Lee Warren Speaker. Uh, uh, that, that will find me very easily. Um, and of course, I'm delighted if anyone wants to buy, to buy my book. Um, if you buy it from Amazon, you'll get a rare unsigned copy of my book. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> you, um, very delighted too. And I think if, if there were one one final bit of wisdom, uh, if, if, if I could call it wisdom, I would give is I, and I know this sounds banal, but so much of the secret of communication, good communication, is in the preparation. Mm. And I just so wish I could I could give everybody just step back for ten, just 10 minutes. Look at the quality of what you're doing. Look at the result it's getting in the world. Is that the result you want? And if not, just spend 10 minutes preparing better, getting to know your audience better. That, 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 that really is what I'd emphasize. Brilliant way to wrap us up. Lee, thank you for being a guest on Full Funnel Freedom today. My pleasure. Sales leaders, what an amazing podcast with Lee. I took a ton of great ideas and insights away. Uh, you know, number one is make it about the audience. You've you've heard us talk a lot about that with our guests, and you've heard me in my in the early episodes talk about it's not about us, it's about them. And them could be a buyer, them could be one of our sales team, uh, them could be, in this case, the audience, whoever we're speaking with, whether that's a board or our sales team or a public presentation, it's it's all about them. The other thing that ties into that is what action do I want my audience to take at the end of my talk? If we're presenting to share information, well, that could be an email and a PDF. They, they don't need us for that. And in that case, we're making it all about us, not about them. So think about what is the action that you want to take, you want your audience to take at the end of your conversation, whether that's a coaching call one-on-one -on -one with one of your sellers, or whether that's the board and you're looking to get budget approved for more headcount or training or whatever that might be. And lastly, the idea of rehearsal instead of practice. Love that idea of rehearsal. I'm a big believer in improv or improvisation. And I know when I do my talks, and if you've seen me speak at the Sandler Summit before, I do a dress rehearsal a few times. It's not scripted though. And so I have a loose structure. I know what beats I want to hit. And really, I get there a different way than I probably have in my previous rehearsals. So instead of scripting it and practicing it, rehearse it. That's an absolutely brilliant idea. Thanks for listening. Have a fantastic rest of your week. And until we connect on the next episode, go create full funnel freedom. Thanks for listening to today's episode of the Full Funnel Freedom Podcast. You can continue to support us by leaving us a review and a rating, sharing this episode with a couple of sales leaders in your network who you care about. I'd love to connect with you. I'm easy to find Hamish Knox on LinkedIn. Also, if you'd like a free 15-minute call with me, go to www.hamish.sandler.com forward slash how to Sandler. Until we connect on the next episode, go create full funnel freedom.